Well, welcome back to the big board. Having a little look at Atlanta is ours from Multiman Publishing. This is a, originally way back in the day, I believe it was a Joe Belkowski uh, design, or he was involved in uh, some of the original modules. Systems have evolved enormously uh, since then, and uh, many, many modules have been released. And this current one obviously deals with uh, Atlanta is ours, it's called, uh, deals with uh, the you know the march on the Atlanta uh, the Atlanta campaign and battles in and around that, so pretty interesting stuff. Um, getting back into this uh, series, the Great Campaigns of American Civil War, challenging to play solo for me, uh, very fiddly on the the counter density and and things of that nature, as you can see here. And I've got this on a, a bit of Plex, which is on an uneven table, uh, just because that's the way I made the table. <laughs> Two huge pieces of mesquite. But uh, the density is, is high. We have uh, leader counters. Uh, we have uh, formation leaders. We have the unit uh, strength counters. And we have fatigue and other status markers that go on the counter. So there are charts over here on the left, uh, just above over here, you can see where you can put your armies over there, keep track of their status, and then just have a marker here to represent those guys, which is kind of nice, adds to the fog of war. I'm not a huge fan of looking over to see what's going on all the time. Uh, I like to try and be a careful stack manager, which sometimes doesn't work out very well. But anyway, so, Getting back into this system, just using the basic rules, uh, the standard rules from 1.3, using a, a scenario, uh, I forget what it's, what's it called again. Uh, it's underneath the, the, the camera, so I can't really move it. To, but uh, something like a great opportunity lost or whatever. Uh, but it's where McPherson was over this area, in this area here by this little village or farm called Strand. And they were trying to cross this uh, Snake Creek here and uh, move up uh, Sugar Valley or come through Caldwell and then come up into this township here called Rasaka, which is behind these two big stack stacks. And uh, let's see if we can get a little closer here without the, the flexing of the plex. <clears throat> so we had one, two, three, it was actually four or five different stacks. There's another stack just behind us here. Uh, trying to get to this hex in one turn. All starting in exhausted mode, you know, stretched out along this line, and they had to basically advance along this, this path, uh, just slightly out of frame. So you started basically with fatigue zero for these guys, but they were in exhausted mode. So some for, some forces were, were flipped over and disorganized and others weren't. And what it all comes down to then for this, this type of scenario is how well do you roll as the Union player for your movement points? Because you know, every turn you roll a die and whatever that uh, D6 number is, that's your number of movement points. So you might move one hex <laughs> or you might move six hexes. Uh, well, you know, six movement points. And that can be painful if uh, you've got your largest best force and it only advances one hex. And then you've got to put a fatigue one on those units. And then you'll uh, next round after you've moved everybody else, you'll roll again and see how far you get and you'll put a fatigue two on it. So you want to get you know up in and around here and be in fatigue two or three, ideally two, uh, status so that you have a chance at maybe having uh, a moving attack into Rasaka, into this uh, what ended up being a fortified uh, zone that's in a redoubt hex. It's quite a tough little uh, village or township there, and uh, but not a strong force being not a strong force here. These guys were uh, at strength three, right? They became disorganized and had to retreat as the, a result of the combat. So what happened then? I was thinking, well, gee, there's no way we can make it, right? I was trying to get around this side here as well with Sweeney, uh, Sweeney down here, to get the third hex uh, 
so they could do a grand assault and try and try and make a grand assault happen, which you've still got to roll for those things, so it just doesn't happen automatically. Um, nevertheless, I was at fatigue level three when I got these two uh, stacks consolidated and adjacent to the village, and I had this stack sitting here. And let's see. We then uh, elected to try and do a grand assault. So we went through the assault exercise, uh, rolled for that. You've got to roll to see how many units can attack. So McPherson rolled and he was able, fortunately, to get two units into the assault. And then we uh, elected to go for a grand assault. And so he rolls another die and uh, messes around with his uh, command value and all that sort of stuff. and then he was allowed to add one more, actually two more hexes into the assault, but there was only one available, so we added that hex into it. And that came up with, uh, uh, it's still a tough attack. It was a little bit over one to one. It was 26 factors versus 15 because uh, forces were doubled or tripled in here, depending on whether they were in uh, breastworks or fortifications. And I don't believe you you apply a multiplier for the redoubt and then a multiplier for the fortifications. I couldn't see anywhere in the rules for that and it wouldn't really make sense anyway, for, from my perspective. Uh, so we had a one-to-one -one attack. The only uh, die roll modifier was a plus one uh, uh, for the plus one for the defender for going across the stream and a plus one for the attacker because they're running an assault so we ended up with a net six and four on the die rolls which is a net difference of two and we looked up that on the combat table combat results table and we ended up getting uh two uh, losing two combat steps for the attacker and all of the forces would then become disrupted, which uh, was capital D, which means these units can't move any further this turn. So if these other guys had already tried to move uh, in the game, the scenario would be basically over and we would not be able to capture the hex and win the objective. But because we elected to go for this first, this assault first to see what happened, thinking that, hey, we could maybe make some uh, desperate assault with eight fact dis eight disorganized factors, uh, or, uh, as it turns out, advance into the hex. Still had to roll for movement. Fortunately, roll three. Here's the die roll here, roll three. And, uh, well, actually, I guess that it must have been here because that's one, two, three to there. Uh, so move three hexes into here, capture the, capture the little... Uh, a little objective and, and you're done with the scenario. So it's a good little learning scenario. You can play it multiple times because you never know what's going to happen with the, with the die rolls for movement. And it's a great way to explore the rule book and understand a little bit more about the mechanics and how things all interplay. And you actually get to use pretty much all the, all the key mechanics for the game, cavalry, assaults, moving attacks, uh, uh, dealing with fatigue. The only thing you're not dealing with is fatigue recovery and uh, conducting uh, entrenchment exercises and dealing with supply for the advanced rules and things like that. So, and also get you familiar with the terrain format and things of that, that type as well. So great little scenario to wet your teeth on the system or to reintroduce you back to the system if you've been away from it for a while like I have. And when I played I played uh, probably a mere ooh, four turns or something like that uh, of, the, of the system overall. So this was a, a nice way to get back into it. It's got my uh, juices flowing to explore a larger scenario. And we'll see what comes of that in the near future. Talk to you soon. And thanks for watching, by the way.